in the, I'm looking for the, the 35th verse, John 6 and 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. So somebody will probably say, well, I just thought you said that stay in the presence of God when you have a thirst. That is what I said. But let's look at the contents of what Jesus was saying. What he was letting them know is that, number one, I'm the bread of life. And bread stands for food. And what food does, it nourishes the body. So what Jesus was letting them know that I am the God that will nourish your soul. Whatever you need, I've got it. Then he turned around and then said that, and then if you believe on me, ye shall never thirst. All right, let's look at this. Once you have the nourishment, of the body, and it works the same way in natural and spiritual. Even when you get through eating, you still need water. Come on, somebody. And what Jesus was letting them know, that I am not only the nourishment for your soul, but I am also the spirit for your soul. Because even after you get saved, you need to be sealed. You need to be empowered. And that falls under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. So I don't want anybody to get this confused about what we're trying to say tonight. Because, see, they were hooked up. They, they didn't have a problem believing the manna that fell down from heaven. And what Jesus was even trying to show them is that that manna, they, I believe, if I, if I got this right, I believe they had to eat it that day. They couldn't just let the manna just linger over. And then not only that, but manna meant, what is it? But what Jesus was letting him know, now I am the bread of life. Now, they, it was easier for them to deal with that manner than to deal with the real, personal bread of life. And do you not know it's sad to say, but that's where it is today? It's hard for many people to really accept Jesus for who he is. And the reason is, is the Bible puts it this way. It says, for the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them which believe not. I know we've been hitting unbelief all week, but it's because it's one of the strongest spirits in this day. And do you not know that unbelieving is so powerful and so detrimental that you will find it in the book of Revelation? Well, if you talk to folks, they say, yeah, I know liars going to hell. I know hormones is going to hell. I know a Dutch is going to hell, but you better keep reading because it says, and the unbelieving. Somebody better read their word. You're in the ca same category as an adulterer. You're in the same category as a whoremonger. I'm in the book. The same category. And that's why it was so hard for them to really accept Jesus for who he is. So when we go on and we look at as Jesus was trying to explain to them who he was. Remember there was a lady that was, a, as we were singing, fill my cup. The first part says that there was a woman by the well. Anybody remember that scripture? And when Jesus said, Give me to drink. And one thing, she might not have known a whole lot about him, but she knew there was something different about him. And the thing was this, the thing was this. He even told her that the water that I have, he that drinketh after this water, shall never thirst again. She once you've tasted from the fountain of Jesus, do you not know that you are now a candidate of eternal life. Come on, somebody. I don't know about y'all, but I want to put this in your hearing. 
don't get duped by the theology of eternal security. It is a lie from the pits of hell. Oh, I knew y'all was going to get quiet. Don't let folk tell you once in Christ and never out. The devil is a liar. God has never accepted sin from anybody. Come on, somebody. And he's not changing now because the Bible says Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and forever. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's not going to change. Don't sit up and think that because you got saved one day, that now you can sin as much as you want to sin. But God understands. Oh, y'all, the devil is lying. But see, in the last day, the Spirit speaketh expressly that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and to doctrines of devils. People want a reason to sin. People want you to condone their sin. But the devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. And the reason that people have started getting off is because they've lost their hunger and their thirst after God. Naturally so. The body is made up of about 70% liquid water. About somewhere in that category. I may not have the exact number, but it's somewhere in that number. And that's why water is just important, even to your naturalistic man. And I know we got some folks sitting right here. Your liquid is Pepsi. Woo, I know that one. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to somebody. All this dark pop. Woo, I'm thirsty. Let me get me a pop. No, when you're really thirsty. Come on, somebody. Can't nothing really quench your for real thirst. Not even Gatorade can do it. But can't nothing uh, quench that real thirst but a good cold glass of water. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. But that scenario is synonymous with what people try to do. When there is a thirst in their soul for God, they try to put things in the place to try to quench that thirst. They'll try to put a man there. They'll try to put a woman there. They'll try to put a job there. Come on, somebody. But there's nothing that can quench that thirst but the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't care how you try. It's not going to work. And the reason that water is so important to the body because it carries the nutrients throughout the body. I'm not a doctor, but I learned this in science in school. Come on here. It literally carries nutrients throughout the body. And that's why I do believe that there's something in this hour. We, we've got to be careful of the water that we drink. I believe that this is some of the cause of so much kidney damage. Other than all y'all drinking all that pop. Y'all need that pop alone. I'm going to say it again because y'all quiet. Leave the pop alone. Can't sit up and drink no sex pops in one day. Ooh, I know I hear the Holy Ghost. Come on. Pop bloat you up. I'm not saying you can't never drink a pop, but y'all are excessive in here. I can't make it unless I get my Pepsi. Some of y'all wake up with a Pepsi. Go to sleep with a Pepsi. Look at all the caffeine. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Like, let her get back on the subject. I'm still on the subject now. Come on, somebody. Because we need these naturalistic bodies. 
God's going to use us. But hello, somebody. 